So where I left off, we had a little bit of a problem or something we wanted to fix. So whenever we add an auction here, so if I call this special and then I give it a price and hit submit, I don't see it pop up here. Um, and that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be going over three different ways to actually do that. At the end, we're going to be using subscriptions and using that forward because that's going to be real time. But in general, some of the other techniques are useful in other places. So I figured I might as well show you how you can do refetching of queries and also update the cache if you want to. And there's kind of advantages and disadvantages to each technique, which we'll get into. The other thing real quick is I wanted to fix the problem when we refresh and we don't see the data there. Um, that's because Apollo is caching, or not Apollo, but AppSync. So I'm going to get rid of this rehydrated around this um, in our index file. And then also in auctions, I'm just going to make the limit 100. And now if I come back over here, I can see a lot more of all the ones I've created. And let's see if we can find one called special. Um, it should be, yep, there we go. All right, so let's go ahead and start off by coming to our create auctions form. So our first technique we're gonna use is something called refetch queries. Um, and what we do here is we give it an array and we're gonna give it an object and we pass in the query that we'd like to update. In this case, list auctions. And we also need to pass in the variables. So we said limit 100. So I'm gonna have to pass that in to refetch queries. So what this is gonna do is when it fetches the mutation, it's also gonna send another query off to see the latest data for list auctions. So we can see that if we open up our network tab. All right, and I'm just going to filter for GraphQL cause that's what's gonna come up. And uh, let's refresh here. So here's all our data. And here I'm going to say uh, another and hit submit. So I can see my requests here. Here is the initial load. So we initially loaded list queries or sorry, list, list auctions. Uh, and then we fired off a post request to create the auction. And then lastly, we refetched list auctions to get the latest one. Um, and so we can see if we search, another is gonna be here and here it is at the bottom. So awesome. So that is the first technique we can use. So the plus of this is we're getting the latest data because it's refetching it. Um, but the con is we are doing another request in our HP request. So we can actually avoid that by directly updating the cache, which is what we're gonna look at next. But before I do that, I just wanna reset our form here. So I'm gonna say reset form. We get this as the second parameter here to on submit. So I'm gonna say reset form. Um, and I'm just gonna call that after we actually submit a form so it clears up here. So the second method is updating the cache directly. So I'm gonna get rid of this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say update and here I'm gonna pass in a store and here I'm gonna pass in, well, it's gonna be a function. So update is a function. It takes first parameter store, second parameter, we can get auto completion on. Here's the response from the mutation. All right, so we get back some data and here I'm gonna check whether we got a good response. So if we don't have data or data.createAuction does not exist, I'm just gonna return. And so the idea here is we just use what we get back from the mutation response to, to update the cache. Because what we're gonna get returned is a new auction. So we can use that to just append that to the end of our cache um, and use that. Uh, so to do that, what we need to do is we need to first get the current um, items in the cache. So here I'm gonna say, um, I'm just going to call it auctions and we're going to get this by saying store.readQuery. Uh, and how this works is we just pass in a query and variables. So our variables is going to be limit 100. And again, our query is going to be the one we used before. So we're going to say GQL and we're going to say limit or sorry, list auctions. Awesome. Um, and then after that, we just add uh, an item to the beginning of auctions or to the end of auctions or do whatever we want with it. And then we just need to write the data back. And so we're gonna say store.writeQuery. And we're just gonna use the same parameters we did here. Oops, copy. Um, and then we also pass in data. And so what data is, is the new data that we changed or we wanna write back. Now, ideally you wanna not mutate that. So we can either kind of do create a new object and create a new array, 
um, but it's going to be kind of annoying. So I'm going to go ahead and just install Emmer and that's going to make our lives a lot easier. So I'm going to say yarn add Emmer and at the top here, I'm going to import it. So import Emmer from Emmer. And I mean, we should be getting the produce function or produce. All right, so I'm gonna say produce and we're gonna pass in auctions. And here is our draft state. And all we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, we're gonna assume that we get a non-null item. And if we hover over this, we can see um, it's possibly not. And unless we're not getting type definitions right now, we can change that by passing in a list auction query right there. Um, and now we actually get the type definitions for it. So I'm gonna say draft state dot list auctions dot items. So all these things could possibly be null. I'm assuming if I got to this point that they're not null. Um, and then I'm just going to, I can either unshift or push depending on it if I want it to go to the beginning or the end. So I'm gonna add it to the beginning. So we'll add that there. Um, and then here we're just going to uh, push on uh, this item. So we get it from the response. So we're gonna say data dot create auction and we're assuming we got one and we don't even actually have to do that. We just pass it on like this. Okay. Um, and it's not liking this. I'm not sure why it doesn't like data. Oh, expect a comma. There we go. All right. So let's see this in action now. Um, so here are all our items. I'm going to say uh, special two, and it's going to be $2 and we're going to say submit. And you'll notice it actually pops up twice. So this is a little, uh, a bug that I experienced with it. So we can see what it says right here and counter two children with the same key. Now, if I refresh this, you'll notice we only have one special two. I can search it. So it's just a kind of a bug with updating. And I looked this up on GitHub and uh, there's actually an issue about it. And people are experiencing it as well. And they say, if you just disable offline, that it works. Um, so I'm just going to, well, I guess in this case, he said at disable offline true. Um, but in our case, I'm just going to turn it off. That way we can get the update working. Now we're not actually going to be using this method to update the cache anyway. Um, so we could keep that off, but to show you guys it working, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so um, I'm just gonna call it QQQ and it's gonna be $14. Submit, we can see it pops up there. We're still getting two of them. That's sad. Um, so ideally this should work, um, but what we're gonna do next to make this even better is add optimistic response, which I believe also gets rid of that bug, but we'll see. So the difference between optimistic response and if you don't add optimistic response is uh, update waits for the mutation to be complete and then shows a change in the UI. Optimistic response fires right away um, and then shows a, a change in the UI and then waits for the update to come back or the mutation to come back and then it updates the UI again. And I'm just gonna hit control space here and I can get the whole uh, auto completion of what I should be typing here. It even auto completes the type name for me. The ID here I'm gonna say is gonna be negative one. Uh, you might wanna create like a UUID uh, in this case. I'm just going to use that and I'm gonna use the name and the price. Um, give that a save and let's see. Oh yeah, this should be a string. So a string there. Um, and now it's happy with us. Uh, so you'll notice this looks like what the response should be from the mutation. If we come back over here, so the mutation expects an ID, a name, and a price. And so our opti optimistic response does just that, ID, name, and also price. And we can see the type name we have to add in there. Um, and the ID here, we could create our own ID. I'm just gonna put a negative one in since uh, we're just going to keep this for a second. All right, so um, I don't know why initially when this refreshes, it doesn't reload all the items right away. I have to refresh again. Um, www and we'll create, this is gonna be a dollar. We'll hit submit and we get www, awesome. Uh, we still have this uh, duplicate response. I was thinking it got rid of it when we disable offline. At least that's what this was saying, I believe. Uh, even when they remove the optimistic response property and I can confirm that, okay, I have to say disable offline to be true. My bad. 
I just should have read that better. All right, now let's try it. So let's say uh, one, two, and hit submit. And nice, looks like it's working now. So that's how we can get rid of the duplicates. Uh, not sure why it's having trouble with the offline. Uh, that'll probably be fixed soon, uh, but we're not gonna be using this anyway. Uh, in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take another technique, uh, adding subscriptions, and we'll see what the advantage of that is. Now, the advantage of this one real quick, I don't know if I explained, but uh, it doesn't require another request. We just take whatever we're getting back from the mutation, and we use that to update. Um, we add that here. Uh, so that is the plus of updating the cache directly as you save a request. Um, and then subscriptions we're going to talk about in the next video.